hey, good morning, my friends. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Fuel for Success, episode 82. I know that I'm not as good as introductions as our boy uh, Mike Hopkins, but uh, he's on the road right now. He should be signing on any minute. But thank you so much for those that took time out of their schedule to watch our Thursday morning show. Today, we always talk about business and entrepreneurship. And uh, it's going to be a very exciting show today because this is the show where we get very practical about business success, startup companies. There's still those out there. This is why we do this show. It's called Fuel for Success. What we're hoping to do is give you the fuel that you need to go to the next level. Nobody should ever uh, be satisfied or content with where you are right now. You should always be striving to grow. And that is absolutely the secret is never losing your hunger, never losing your drive, never losing your passion. And uh, that's why we do this, my friends, because if we can spark one person out there to become healthier, to become absolutely um, Elizabeth, or Aaron, you absolutely may put the uh, website on the show and we'll post it up on the uh, chat box here. I see my buddy uh, Joe Giletti is on the show today. I'm going to invite him on uh, air anytime we can get a chance to get him on. Uh, I'd like to have him on with us, especially on Thursdays. But uh, anyways, we're uh, praying for Mike. They're on a long road trip to St. Louis, about an eight-hour drive. And uh, we're, they're heading to uh, St. Louis today for Mission Live. And Aaron, there's your website, jubileemissions.net. Give it, a, give it a shot. Check it out. Everybody click it. Take a good look at it. Uh, Aaron is uh, very passionate about missions in Rwanda and uh, women's ministry. So feel free to check that out. And uh, friends, listen, pray for Mission 25. We are going to St. Louis, Missouri. In fact, today I leave about uh, 2 o'clock. Caleb and I are actually flying out of here. And uh, looking forward to seeing everybody there. We're way over 80 people pre-registered. And that's not including uh, two to three other youth groups that have emailed and said that they were coming. So we're anticipating uh, a great turnout in St. Louis. Remember, it is not a conference. It is a missions trip. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be uh, doing missions work, serving people. Uh, serving the homeless, uh, troubled teenagers, battered women, doing the Mission 25 scavenger hunt. Hey, I love this shirt, Joe. Thanks. Good morning, what business and entrepreneurship. Is that what everybody wears? Uh, yeah, it's one of the older ones, so we're working on some new versions. But yeah, sometimes it's confused. I figure for the business and entrepreneurship, you know, you want to be 99, but you don't want to be the 99%. You want to be the 1%. That's why you're on this show. But, you know. Yeah, hey, I like it, my friend. Joe's a marketing genius, man. Joe, what got you so intrigued in marketing? I'm just curious. This is kind of how our phone calls work. We small talk a total of like 20 seconds, and then <laughs> I'm in. And then usually Joe yeah. gets frustrated because he's like, dude, you're asking all the questions. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> But let's do a little rapid fire on each other today on today's show. Hopefully Mike's able to make it. He may not be because he's, you know, he's traveling. He's trying to find a, a Wi-Fi connection and what have you. So, you know, my friend, uh, looking forward to seeing you tonight. Um, looking forward to hanging out, chilling, just kicking back and doing some chatting and brainstorming, some vision casting, some problem solving. So what got you so into marketing, my friend? Failure. <laughs> Failure got me into marketing. <laughs> you know, uh, when you when you need to uh, make money to pay the bills for all these grand visions that you have, you start realizing there's only one of you, and you can either hire more salespeople, which is difficult to do if you don't have money, or you can uh, work on marketing, which is sales multiplied. And so um, I really started studying marketing, and it, it changed my life. I know you're really big into ilovemarketing.com, and it's a really good website. I, I really should be watching it more. Uh, tell, tell me what got you into that, man, and what, what do you get from that show, man? 
Well, it gave me a framework. And I think that's one of the things that anybody can take away from uh, a show, at really, whether it's ministry or business, a, a framework. It gave me a framework for how to think about marketing, not just as, um, you know, how do I get a customer, but how do I um, treat that customer in such a way that my business grows as a result of the wow experience that I give to them. So they have kind of an, a framework for eight steps to marketing. And uh, basically, I just use that framework. I always write that framework down when I'm doing a new campaign, and then I work my way through it. And I know I'm using something that's a proven model. They basically do eight steps of marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let yep. me ask you this. You know what I like about that? Um, the fact that they have. I don't know if I'm losing Matt or if everyone else is losing Matt. Yeah, he, he cut out there. So um, let's talk about marketing a little bit while we're waiting on his connection to get there. Marketing, look at this. I'm the only guy on the show. This is funny. I'm the guest. Um, the, the first step that they talk about in marketing is um, to select a single target audience to be very clear who it is that you're talking to. And we've talked about this on the show. Um, the second step, and uh, this is what they call they actually break it into three categories. Um, but the second step, and this is getting a new customer, would be after you've selected a single target market, would be to use direct response marketing to get a response. Hi, Matt. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, I noticed you wanted oh, to be on the back side, so you, you found a way to uh, <laughs> kick me off. Uh, just so you know, while we're in the so, middle of this interview, okay, and us chatting, I am going to be getting a phone call that I've got to take for like 30 seconds. Uh, it's the airline. I'm teaching on. What's okay. that? So if I take I'm teaching it, on marketing right now. Yeah, just flow. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm working on some marketing stuff right here, marketing my way into St. Louis. Uh, Joe, before we go back into the steps, I, want to, I wanted to just share this because I get my hands moving. Mike don't think that me moving my hands causes me to get kicked off, but you follow the common denominator when y'all lose me is when I'm going real wild with my hands. I don't know why. So I got to keep them down here, you know, no movement. But uh, Joe, listen to this. So basically, I was uh, I was sharing with one of my clients this morning and, you know, they're, he's in the middle of losing weight. and He's doing phenomenal. I mean, he's doing awesome. He's juicing twice a day. He's doing 20 minutes of cardio. Now I moved him up to 30 minutes of cardio. And what we worked on today was... Um, developing the right habits, but not just the right habits, but see, Mike, most people don't have a plan. And I know you're real big into having a clear plan. And what I said, I said, look, it's not that you can't be healthy. It's not that anybody can be healthy. Problem is most people don't plan on being healthy. And so because of that, because we live such busy lives and we don't plan out our meals, that's why we end up eating so many bad meals because we don't plan them out. And I said, look, if you, do, if you do what I'm telling you and you do two protein shakes a day and you juice twice a day, and of course, I'm not going to go into like my whole deal of how I help people lose weight, but I believe that I have the best prescription on the planet. And no, it's not any pills. It's not any formula. It's just a very simple, practical plan that causes people to not feel deprived. One of the reasons why people don't lose weight is because they feel deprived. Anyways, I said all that to say this. So what I'm seeing and catching is the key to success with I Love Marketing is that they have a system and a plan with their marketing that they follow. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, and a proven one at that. Uh, so why do you think it's so effective, man? And why and, and do you see business use do you see businesses not using this plan? And do you think if they did use this plan, they would immediately begin to have more success? I'll give you an example. I, I work with a band that you know, I won't I, I, I actually I worked with lots of bands, um, at least a few bands. I, I guess I wouldn't say lots of bands. Uh, I work with three different bands. And they um they they you know, they're a, a phenomenal band, um, but sometimes um, just because you're great at music doesn't mean you're great at marketing or things like that, which um, 
you know, if you hang out with me much, at least you're going to talk about marketing. And they use just one thing of that and their sales doubled at their concerts. Um, so, you know, and I've worked with other businesses that have, um, that my own businesses included that have just really exponentially increased by using proven marketing methods instead of, uh, you know, just kind of fly by night thing. So, okay, let me ask you this. What mistakes did you make in marketing before you learned this? And I, I do want you to share the eight things that they gave. If you remember them, I'm sure you have them written down. What are some mistakes you made? Well, there's my call. So you begin to share the mistakes you made and I shall return in just about 30 seconds, my friend. All right, great. So guys, mistakes that I made uh, when I was marketing was really, I think most people just like to put out, um, you know, this is my business. This is what I do. Here's my phone number kind of thing. And um, they, I Love Marketing Show makes fun of that. They call that putting out your name and serial number. Probably 90% of the advertising that I see out there is just that. It's brand advertising. It's saying, this is who we are. This is what we do. You know, um, if uh, you're a painting contractor, it's, you know, Mike's painting. You know, uh, we've been in business for 40 years and here's our number. Um, get a free quote or something like that. And so I did that kind of stuff. Um, I kind of followed the model of what everybody else was doing in marketing. Um, I, I'm specifically in real estate. And when I started following the model of what everybody else was doing, that was my biggest mistake. Because if I'm doing what everybody else is doing in marketing, uh, I'm not standing out. And so when I started doing advertising, that's called, there's different schools of advertising. What they espouse is something called direct response marketing, which means uh, most of the marketing that you see, even Apple, which has been great, um, you need lots and lots of money to get the word out about brand advertising. This is my brand. And, and that's how Apple has done it, basically. However, uh, most people who don't have millions of dollars to spend at the outset, the only way to build your brand and make money at the same time instead of spending money that doesn't work is to do direct response advertising. And what that is, is you provide a very real... Uh, value to the customer and in order to get that value they have to uh, either call you or opt in or make a response to you you see this in direct mail you see it in uh, radio ads and stuff like that so you all see it all over the internet let's take Matt's business for example if Matt wanted to do direct response advertising one of the things he could do with his coaching for weight loss is he could say okay he could put an ad out there on Facebook and pay for people who click on that ad and it could say something like um, free video reveals how to lose 10 pounds in, um, in 30 days guaranteed. Uh, for more information on this free report, click here. And so the people who click are direct, directly responding. And that was the biggest mistake that I made in marketing was doing what everybody else did and just doing brand advertising um, and just kind of getting the word out about my business. That just makes you poor and you waste a lot of money in marketing. But direct response advertising where you're providing a very real result for somebody uh, in advance and they have to click or call or go to your website or whatever it is, call to action. that's the kind of advertising. In other words, money. a call yep. to action. A call to right. action instead of just – So this, this all goes back to having a plan, right? Having a target, having a mission, having a, uh, a, a, a clear – goal in mind rather than just being vague. The biggest mistake I've made in times past and I've watched others mistake, Mike, is uh, they're too vague. And I totally oh. love what you said. And I'm going to do what you just said, actually. I can show someone how to lose 10 pounds in, you know, 30 mm -hmm. days, you know. So I, I might try that video, my friend. Good idea, actually. Yeah. So m let me ask you a question, even though I haven't gotten through all these, have you um, ever thought about taking, I know you have a lot of pictures and people who've been a part of your uh, program for losing weight. Have you ever taken all those pictures? Um, Cause I think a great thing would be to really position, which is another part of marketing, but to position yourself as somebody who gets results. Cause I think in the diet and weight loss industry, the biggest thing is people have tried so many things and they haven't gotten results. That's what they want is the results. And so um, have you ever thought about taking like before and after pictures and take 30 or 40 of the people that you've worked with and just slam them all onto a page and have that be your background for the videos that you do, for example, or 
uh, or do video testimonials and do like three of them before you talk and, you know, kind of mix them into your, your messaging and stuff like that when you're telling. I could, I could see you taking it. Uh, this guy a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's genius. Actually, I just recently this week texted the people that I've helped lose weight in the past, asked them to write up a little uh, short, uh, you know, testimonial of how it happened. And then I, I love the picture idea. I'm going to start doing that totally. And I think that's a great idea to put a picture of them, how much they lost up online and, and even start incorporating more video into, you know, I just re recently, which I'm so glad you brought that up. I just recently relaunched uh, this whole coaching uh, business. And, and before I did life coaching, which I still am, but right now the weight loss is so huge that um joe there's just i literally probably get 10 emails a day maybe even more than that a day so i love the idea of showing results it's one thing to write and say oh yeah i can help you so take that maybe into someone that um you know has maybe um a business maybe a startup company that maybe they don't have testimonies let's say someone's like three months into their business and what would you say to them let's say someone was starting uh, maybe uh, maybe someone going to become a public speaker. Uh, I know you've read a mm -hmm. lot. You've been around some public speakers and whatnot. Or someone starting maybe a, a detail business, detailing cars. Maybe they don't have a lot of testimonies. Uh, what would you say to mm -hmm. them, man? Well, um, I can, you know, any one of those are pretty transferable, including even if you're, again, in diet and weight loss like you are, uh, you could speak, which will get you more leads for people to be, coaches. So that's a great marketing method in itself. But uh, what would happen? The question is, what do you do with those people respond? What do you do with the people who you selected a single target market? So for you, it's people who are, are fed up with being overweight or feel unhealthy or are out of energy. And those are all different markets and different ways that you could apply your marketing. Now you use a direct response ad. Let's say you use Facebook and somebody comes to your page, they opt in or Matt, they know you and they send you an email what's the next step? I mean, what's the next step in that funnel? And for them, uh, and I think this is great, this is called education-based marketing. They will teach them something pertinent to the desired end result that they want. So if somebody it wants to be a uh, public speaker, right? Well, what is the desired end result that they're getting for the person who's going to pay them to speak? Um, are they gonna talk to students and go to a high school and motivate them not to bully? then they should do a video for people who opt in that show how their program, uh, how bullying is affecting students across the world. Or if it was the car detailer, um, you know, that's more of a direct sale. It's, it's, you, I'm trying to think of how you would use education. Um, you could talk about uh, the effects of uh, people getting sick because their car wasn't clean and they're breathing in all the dust mites or something. I don't know. But, you, you know, some sort of education base like that for for yourself. Again, you could do a um, you could do videos just showing people how to make smoothies. Right. I, I know a business that's doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and that's what they do. They shoot videos showing the uh, juicing that they do, making the smoothies and uh, just telling the story. And so you're not necessarily making a sale. You're just educating and motivating. And that's the key. Um, and so the way that you motivate, whenever you do an ad, you want to think about three things. Um, you want to think about the list that you're offering to, the words that you're using to make that offer, and what the offer is. Because let's take those people who are emailing in. They're obviously interested, maybe not enough to pull the trigger. So one thing that marketers do a lot of times, they say, you know what? I'll prove it to you that you're going to lose weight. Do a two-week trial with me for $1.00. And if after two weeks you don't want to move on, that's fine. If after two weeks you're ready to go, it's, you know, $100 a month, you get blah, 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 you get this, and it does that for you, you get this so that it does that for you. Those are benefits, not just features. And you tell them all that stuff, and there's very, very small barrier to entry. That's called a mafia offer. You use an offer that's hard to refuse, right? And so if you offer to give your coaching for two weeks and maybe just do it at a dollar, right, to start off, you're thinking, man, I don't want to give away my time for a dollar. Well, you have to do the math in your business. And the same person with who's doing a, um, a car deal detailing, how many times is that person going to detail their car in a year? Maybe it's $100 per detail, but they do it 400, uh, excuse me, four times a year. 
So that's that customer is worth four hundred dollars to you. Uh, if you're doing coaching and it's a hundred dollars a month, that person's worth twelve hundred a year to you. So to give them two weeks for free just to get them in the door and pull the trigger, great marketing. That's some good stuff, Joe. Let me ask you this. Uh, next to ilovemarketing.com, can you maybe name three books that you've read or you've seen that were really good books on marketing? I don't read. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we'll never uh, Perry Marshall. We'll recommend each other. Hints all this here. <laughs> and not including right. other on my iPad now. If I could transfer all these, on, there's a business for somebody. If I could transfer all these on my iPad, that would be world changing. Dude, I used to travel with like a whole bag of just books. Literally, I would pack a carry-on bag and get as many books as I can on there just because I, I I can't imagine being without my books. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, one of my favorites, uh, anything by Dan Kennedy. He is the uh, Maharashi, so to speak, and we're losing Matt again. Uh, he is the Maharashi, the uh, kind of the king of direct response marketing. Uh, he's got probably 10 or 15 books out there. Great content by him. Uh, another book that's actually just recent and really phenomenal is a book uh, called 80-20 Marketing by Perry Marshall. That's a phenomenal book that talks about really that it's very interesting, but 80% of your revenue in your business, if you really charted it and looked at your customers, 80% um, of your revenue comes from 20% of your customers. Um, and if that's not the case, he shows how you have customers who are willing to pay a lot more to ascend and go to the next level uh, with you and your business and, and buy more stuff or, or not even more stuff, maybe get more involved at a more expensive level to get greater value. So that's a great book. There's another one by um, Ryan Holiday, which is very cutting edge. Um, and just look him up. He has two books out there. I'm losing the name of the book off the top of my head, but um, he started some absolutely huge companies, especially as it relates to social media. And his is all about exactly. really making the product align with the very real need in the marketplace in so much that it's so great. It, it quote unquote sells itself. Now, no marketer believes that line. That's, that's a terrible mistake to believe that your product will sell itself because I'm sure that well, I, I know that Matt Maddox is one of the greatest uh, coaches out there for exercise and dieting but it doesn't just sell itself. He has to get out there and be in the world and be seen by the world in order for people to know about him. So, um, Joe, so yeah, those are three books. Man. <laughs> Joe, what, what book are you talking about, my friend? I talked about three. I talked about anything by Dan Kennedy, uh, who is the best. BS guy? Yeah, 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 BS guy, dare I say it. Um, He's pretty, <laughs> but I like him. Uh, the other guy that I mentioned, uh, mentioned was Perry Marshall, The 80-20 Rules for Sales and Marketing. Uh, that book will wreck your brain. Um, and then the third one I talked about was Ryan Holiday, who's a young guy, and um, he talks about aligning your product so much so that it's, that it's viral, and he talks about how he does that. And he's got all kinds of best-selling books and helped best-selling authors. So, yeah, those are three great books I would recommend. How about you? What would you recommend about marketing um, or books? Well book that I read and actually a very successful businessman recommended it. It's the 22, I believe it's the 22 Great. Laws of Marketing. Um, mm. That was one of the best books that I've read. The the one by Dan Kennedy, the, the what is it, the No BS Marketing it's called or something like that. Yeah, there's a whole series. There's like 10 of those. Yeah, and to me, Jab, Jab, Right Hook, even though it's not really specifically a marketing book, it's got some really good principles that I think a lot of people in marketing miss. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk brings it back to uh, to uh, keeping it real. And, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what, we all know this, you know, word of mouth, if you can somehow, and, and the word you used earlier, which I love, you used the word wow experience earlier. I, I caught that. Um, let me ask you a question. We talked about the wow experience before on this show. Uh, what are some things that you think, now here's the deal. Let's, let's get very practical. Someone like you and I, that we've done startups literally, you know, in, out of our home, you know, just one person staff, not a lot of cash flow. It's not like you have a secretary 
and maybe someone out there started a business, Joe, but they're also having to work a job, they've got kids, they're busy, and maybe they only have like three to four or five hours a day to uh, work on that business, man. In your opinion, uh, what does someone do in that type of situation? Let's say nobody knows who they are. You know, they're trying to bring a product or a service to the marketplace. They have no brand equity. Um, you know, they're literally like a stranger in, in the business market. How can they mm -hmm. get noticed? How can they get word of mouth going for them? And that's question number one. Question number two is, how do you create that wow experience when there's such limited time and money in some businesses, in your opinion? Uh, my answer to both of those is the same answer. And the answer would be, what do they work on? They work on getting potential customers results in advance, RIA. Um, let's take a customer who, for example, one of the things I'm doing right now, I'm filling a, um, a 5,500 square foot office building that we bought at a discount and I'm putting together an entrepreneur's innovation center. And so one of the things that I'm working to do for people who are potential clients is um, a two week contest where I'm helping them to get results immediately. And so basically they're getting kind of free consulting from me, but they don't know how to do marketing. They don't know, they, they have a lot of questions. So if I could just find 10 or 15 people who wanna double their sales, and what I do for them is I sit down with them, consult with them, uh, give them a clear plan as we work together based on what they're doing, and they start seeing results from that. So they, they put out the marketing that we create, and all of a sudden they make three or four times the money that they invested into marketing back in profits. Those are results. And you better believe if, I, if at that point, if I say, no, I'd like you to be a customer of mine for a year, and we can really ramp this up, that's a wow experience for them because that's exactly what they want. I was doing a, uh, a coaching consulting for a, an entrepreneur, a business owner. And at the end of the day, Joe, the word that you use that I love, that I think a lot of people in business do not pay enough attention to, and that's results. And I think yeah. at the end of the day, that's going to define success and failure, wins and losses, victory or defeat. Can your business produce results? And I love what you said, and I think that's something that everyone should be focusing on. I think too many times people want to go into business, but they're not tenacious about producing results. You know, it's like, um, you know, it's maybe like even in the church world, it's like an evangelist. The evangelists that are staying booked, that have to turn away like on a waiting list, they're guys that get results. You know what I'm saying? The guys that are always like trying to find a place are guys that really don't produce results. Same thing happens in the sales world. So talk to, talk to us for the next two minutes about how to maximize results. Just being productive in general, in life and business. No matter what, you know, businesses, I mean, my Lord, there's millions of businesses. So it's hard to like, we're not gonna target just on one business. But overall, Joe, being a result-oriented person that produces results. Talk to us about that in your opinion. Well, you know, it, that's a really broad question, but the first thing that really jumps to mind is just, um, and I, while you were talking, it grabbed me, was the word care. If you really care about bringing value to your customer, um, that's gonna shine through. <laughs> Um, and if you really care and you have the ability to bring results, I, I'm assuming um, you're an ethical person and you're working to really provide value for a customer, not just some fly by night guy trying to sell, you know, snake oil kind of thing. Um, but if you really care about your customer, you're going to work to get them results that are meaningful to them and are a wow experience to them. Um, for example, and trying to, yeah, so care. You know, care and bring value immediately that gets them results. That's well, um, back to what Jesus said in the Bible. If a man asks you to go one mile, go two. So few yeah. businesses yeah. literally apply that going the extra mile, giving more. Uh, very few people actually live with the give more mentality. 
Meaning, you know, and again, remember what I told you probably a month ago on one of our episodes, Walt Disney's success, you know, Walt Disney, right? He said, I can sum it up in two things. Pay attention to detail, exceed expectations. Most people Great. in business are out to exceed expectations, you know, and I think that if you can over the long haul, it's not going to happen overnight, but if in your mind and your heart, and I love what Joe said, if there's a care there. For your people, it's not just making money. It's not just about the sale. You know, you want customers for life. You want people that, you know, not just buy from you one time. And I believe, Joe, when we show with our actions that we're willing to go the extra mile, we care, we go above and beyond. I really believe that's the key to a massive breakthrough in business long term and building sustainable customers and customer fanatics people that market for you for free, people that talk about you on Facebook, people that go home and tweet about their experience in your business without you even asking, you know, it's huge. So, man, Joe, we love, I love uh, powwowing with you on business and entrepreneurship. I told Mike, I said, we need to get Joe as much as possible on our Thursday show. So I'm always delighted when we can grab you and have you on here. I'm not sure if I didn't even scroll down the chat box. I'm not sure if people were asking questions or not. I don't know. But uh, usually Mike helps with that. But, uh, Joe, we're a little bit over time, but I would like to just maybe 30 seconds each, I'd like to maybe sum up uh, maybe two to three actions that people can take as a result of today's show. So what would you say two or three things anybody in business should do after watching today's show? They should watch I Love Marketing. They should... Uh, get healthy by getting hooked up with Matt Maddox for coaching for their dieting and exercise <laughs> plug. Uh, <laughs> and no, no, seriously though, you should. Um, but uh, seriously, you, you should uh, focus in on your customer and figure out how to provide value and results to them immediately. And if you do that, they'll come back to you when they get results and you can sell them the moon. So simple, isn't it? Provide value, get results. But you know what I've learned? A lot of people in business don't have the patience to actually provide that because we want a return. I love what you said. I mean, you know, everyone wants a return on their investment. Very few people give first. And Mike and I have kind of taken a philosophy with the things that we're working on. Uh, we kind of have a give first mentality uh, because most of the stuff we do, we give away uh, because we want to provide value out there. This whole show is all about providing value. You know what I say at the end of, when every person asks me about weight loss coaching, you know what the last thing I say in the email is, look, if you can't afford this at this time, every single Monday, I do a 30 minute show on health and weight loss for free. So basically you're getting four coaching, uh, sessions a month, every Monday at 9am. So this is one little way to give back. This is one little example, if you would. Same thing with uh, soulwinner.tv. You know, they're in Mission 25. You know, these are ways people are always like, uh, well, man, you're so expensive to have you come to my church. Well, man, come to a Mission 25 and we'll cost you a dime, you know, except when you're giving the offering. But, uh, you know, that's free. So we go once a month there and uh, soulwinner.tv is free. This uh, Fuel for su uh, Success is free. So the things that we charge for obviously bring high value and high return for people. But uh, it's at the end of the day, my, or, uh, Joe, you know, your time is the most valuable thing you possess. So I think everybody in business should never feel guilty about charging for your products and services, but you should have a give first mentality, in my opinion. Great. We miss you, Mike. We know you're just heading down to St. Louis, though. We love you and Carol so much. Me and Joe will be hanging with you guys tonight. Everybody that's watching live, thank you. Of course, you, you can watch any show at, on YouTube or iTunes, or you can go to fuelforsuccess.tv. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for family and relationships. That'll be fun. Looking forward to it. Joe, man, you motivated me. You inspired me. I learned, even though I get to talk to you anytime I want, it's a blessing from God. Dude, thank you so much uh, for your time today and for what you shared. It was a lot of value and a lot of great content, my friend. Thanks for having me. God bless. Love y'all.